नाइन रीजन ऑफ एबडोमिनल कैविटी आर यूज टू डिस्क्राइब द लोकेशन ऑफ एबडोमिनल ऑर्गन पेन और पैथोलॉजी द रीजन आर डीलिनिएटेड बाई फोर प्लेन टू सजाइटल प्लेन आर मिड क्लेविकुलर प्लेन दैट पास फ्रॉम मिड पॉइंट ऑफ द क्लेविकल अबाउट नाइन सेंटीमीटर फ्रॉम द मिड लाइन टू मिड इंग्वाइनल पॉइंट दैट इज मिड पॉइंट बिटवीन द एंटीरियर सुपीरियर एक्सपाइन एंड प्यूबिक सिंफाइसिस देन द ट्रांसवर्स प्लेन आर सब कॉस्टल प्लेन दैट पास थ्रू इंफीरियर बॉर्डर ऑफ टेंथ कॉस्टल कार्टिलेज ऑन ईच साइड एंड ट्रांस ट्यूबरक्यूलर प्लेन दैट पास थ्रू इलिया ट्यूबरकल अप्रोक्सिमेटली फाइव सेंटीमीटर पोस्टीरियर टू एंटीरियर सुपीरियर एक्सपाइन एंड द बॉडी ऑफ फिफ्थ लंबर वर्टिब्री Some clinicians use transpyloric and interspinous planes to establish nine quadrants. So the transpyloric plane lies midway between the superior border of manubrium sternum and pubic symphysis at first lumbar vertebrae level. And the transpyloric plane is important landmark as it transects pylorus. fundus of gall bladder neck of pancreas origin of superior mesenteric artery hepatic portal vein root of transverse mesocolon then the duodeno jejunal junction hilum of kidney all are transected by the transpyloric plane then the interspinous plane passes through anterior superior iliac spine on each side other planes are trans umbilical plane passing through the umbilicus and intervertebral disc between third and fourth lumbar vertebrae it uh, divides the abdominal cavity into upper and lower half and the vertical median plane passes longitudinally through the body dividing in it into right and left halves so these four quadrants are again important to auscultate percus palpate and to record the location of findings two sagittal planes passing through mid clavicular point and two transverse planes that is transpyloric and interspinous plane divide the abdominal cavity in nine quadrants and these quadrants are used for locating the abdominal organs pain and pathologies related to them as depicted in the diagrams incisions that allow adequate exposure cosmetic effect should avoid damage to nerves maintain blood supply should cause minimal injury to the muscles and fascia aiming favorable healing so the abdominal incisions include longitudinal incisions uh, they can be median or paramedian then there are oblique and transverse incisions so first we will see longitudinal median incision so they can be made without cutting muscles or major blood vessels or nerves median incision can be made along any part or length of linea alba from zygoid process to pubic symphysis advantage of median incision is that it is relatively bloodless and it avoids injury to major nerves disadvantage is linea alba undergoes necrosis or degeneration after incision due to poor blood supply then the second incision is paramedian that is lateral to median plane they are made in uh, sagittal plane and they extend from costal margin to pubic hairline so the incisions uh, through anterior wall of the rectus sheath freeze the muscle tension and it prevents injury to the vessels and nerves posterior wall of the rectus sheath and peritoneum are incised later then the third variety is oblique or uh, oblique incisions and transverse incisions so there is great sense incision for muscle splitting incision is used for appendectomy then oblique mcburney's incision is made 2.5 cm superolateral to anterior superiliac spine on spino umbilical line external oblique aponeurosis is incised inferomedially in the direction of the fibers and retracted then the muscular aponeurotic fibers of internal oblique transverse abdominis are split in the 
line of the fibers and iliohypogastric nerve is preserved so this incision is closed uh, and the abdominal wall is left strong as before operation then the third is supra pubic incision it is also known as phanestial incision or bikini incision so it is made at uh, pubic hairline commonly the horizontal slide convex incision for cesarean section linea alba anterior layer of rectus sheath are transected and resected superiorly the rectus muscle is retracted and iliohypogastric ilioinguinal nerves are also preserved in this incision then the fourth variety is transverse incision through anterior layer of rectus sheath and rectus abdominis it causes least damage to the nerve supply of rectus abdominis and the transverse incisions are not made through the tendinous intersection of rectus abdominis because cutaneous nerves and the branches of superior epigastric vessels Uh, pierce these fibrous regions transverse incisions can ex can be extended laterally but not superiorly or inferiorly so they are not used in exploratory surgeries then the fifth variety is subcostal incision it provides access to gall bladder and uh, biliary duct on right side and spleen on the left side incision is made parallel and 2.5 cm inferior to the costal margin and we avoid 7th and 8th thoracic spinal nerves so there is high risk incision uh, high risk incisions are inguinal incision they are made uh, when these incisions are made they may damage ilio inguinal nerve then the second high risk incision is pararectal along the lateral border of rectus it may injure its nerve supply then herniation can occur through surgical incisions and uh, nowadays mini invasive laparoscopic and endoscopic surgeries are preferred protrusion of loops of intestine through inguinal wall or inguinal canal is called inguinal hernia when protrusion occurs through deep inguinal ring from deep ring to the inguinal canal then to the superficial inguinal ring into the scrotum it is called indirect or oblique hernia it is more common in male infants with narrow neck of hernial sac and when the protrusion occurs through posterior wall of the inguinal canal or through the weak triangle of hazelbacks this type of inguinal hernia is known as direct hernia indirect hernias occur due to partial or complete patency of processus vaginalis and it may descend into the scrotum indirect hernial coverings as we can see in the diagram are extra peritoneal tissue internal spermatic fascia cremastic fascia external spermatic fascia and skin whereas direct inguinal hernias occur through posterior wall of the inguinal canal through hazelback triangle which is bounded by inferior epigastric artery lateral border of rectus abdominis and inguinal ligament this triangular area is further divided into medial and lateral part by obliterated umbilical artery and the coverings of direct hernia are extra peritoneal tissue fascia transversalis with conjoint tendon external spermatic fascia and skin irreducibility obstruction strangulation are some of the complications of inguinal hernias inguinal hernias are nowadays treated laparoscopically by strengthening myopectineal orifice of fruit head which is bounded medially by abdominal wall laterally by iliosos and inferiorly by cooper's ligament and pectin pubis superiorly it is arched by the internal oblique and transverse abdominis fibers which will simultaneously treat all types of groin hernias and it is suitable for bilateral and recurrent hernias dilated torches pampniform plexus of the testis produces varicocele 
it is visible during standing or straining and it disappears on lying down due to gravity emptying of the veins it is also known as bag of worms and it results from defective walls in the testicular veins anatomical factors responsible for high incidence of varicocele on left side are the left renal vein is clamped between root of the superior mesenteric artery and descending abdominal aorta thus left renal vein is pressed by superior mesenteric artery as it is dragged by the loops of intestine then the second reason is left testicular veins open in left renal vein at right angle then the left testicular vein has less walls mouth of left testicular vein is subjected to spasm due to adrenaline rich blood entering through left renal or left adrenal veins left testicular vein arches over the left renal vein in 16% cases and it obstructs it then the sigmoid colon may also obstruct the left testicular vein and also the left testicular vein is larger than the right testicular vein so these are the reasons why the varicocele is more common on left side varicocele may reduce fertility by increasing venous pressure and elevating testicular temperature accumulation of large amount of serous fluid within the tunica vaginalis is known as hydrocel mostly it is idiopathic or it may be secondary to the infection of testis epididymis processes vaginalis within the inguinal canal normally obliterates at the time of birth and it is detached portion within the scrotum and it is invaginated from front by the testis and thus it forms tunica vaginalis anatomically there are four types of hydrocele first is vaginal which is confined to scrotum second variety is congenital there is communication with the peritoneal cavity it is also known as intermittent hydrocele third variety is infantile it extends upwards up to the internal inguinal ring and the process is vaginalis is occluded at the ring only fourth variety is where the hydrocel of the cord or funicular process fails to obliterate into fibrous cord so tibular cavity shuts off from the uh, from the peritoneal cavity above and the cavity of tunica vaginalis below congenital inguinal hernias can be reduced not the congenital hydrocels so this is the point which helps to differentiate the swelling produced by congenital inguinal hernias and congenital hydrocele phimosis is a condition in which prepuce or foreskin of the penis is so tight that it cannot be retracted fully over the glans penis usually uh, congenital phimosis is associated with pinhole meatus normally the foreskin separates and it is not adherent to glans penis by 6 years of age foreskin should never be forcefully retracted unless 6 years if a child presents with tight foreskin inflammation of glans penis that is balanitis and ballooning of the skin during voiding the condition is known as paraphimosis it is caused when the tight foreskin is forcefully retracted behind the corona of glans penis and it cannot be pulled forward again and the edematous glans may slough out if not treated and the treatment here is circumcision circumcision is a procedure that removes foreskin from human penis circumcision is indicated for phimosis paraphimosis chronic urinary tract infection in this region and uh, in some areas where there is increased incidence of human papilloma virus there we indicate circumcision
इन बैक्टीरियल कंटेमिनेशन ऑकर्स ड्यूरिंग लेप्रोटोमी और गट इज ट्रोमेटिकली पेनिट्रेटेड और रपच्चर्ड एज रिजल्ट ऑफ इन्फेक्शन एंड इन्फ्लेमेशन लाइक अपेंडिसाइटिस इट अलाउज गैस फीकल मैटर बैक्टीरिया टू एंटर इन द पेरीटोनियल कैविटी एंड इट रिजल्ट इन इन्फेक्शन एंड इन्फ्लेमेशन ऑफ पेरीटोनियम दिस कंडीशन इज नोन एज पेरीटोनाइटिस एक्जुडेशन ऑफ सीरम फाइब्रेन पर्स इन टू पेरीटोनियल कैविटी विथ पेन ओवरलाइंग द स्किन इंक्रीज टोन ऑफ एंटेरोलेट्रल एबडोमिनल मसल्स वेन द पेरीटोनाइटिस बिकम्स जनरलाइज कंडीशन इज वेरी लीथल जनरलाइज पेरीटोनाइटिस ऑकल्स वेन द अल्सर परफोरेट्स द वॉल ऑफ स्टमक और डिओडिनम एंड देर इज पिलिंग एसिड इन द पेरीटोनियल कैविटी एक्सेस फ्लूड इन द पेरीटोनियल कैविटी इज कॉल्ड असाइटिक फ्लूड असाइटिस ऑकर्स ड्यू टू मैकेनिकल इंजुरी और पोर्टल हाइपर टेंशन और मेटास्टेस ऑफ कैंसर इन्फेक्शन लाइक ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस स्टारवेशन इट इंटरफियर्स विद द मूवमेंट ऑफ विसरा इफ द एबडोम इज ड्रॉन इन एज चेस्ट एक्सपांड्स पैराडॉक्सिकल एबडोमिनोथोरासिक रिदम मसल रिजिडिटी इज प्रेजेंट इंटेंस पेन विद द मूवमेंट इज द पर्सन विद पेरीटोनाइटिस लाइज विथ नीज फ्लेक्स टू रिलैक्स एंटेरोलेट्रल वॉल्स एंड दे हैव शैलो ब्रीथ द एबडोमिनल पैरासेंटिस इज ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ जनरलाइज पेरीटोनाइटिस इट इंक्लूड्स रिमूवल ऑफ असाइटिक फ्लूड एंड इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ इन्फेक्शन फर्स्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ लार्ज डोज ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक एंड सर्जिकल पंक्चर ऑफ पेरीटोनियल कैविटी फॉर एस्पिरेशन और ड्रेनेज ऑफ फ्लूड इज डन and this procedure is known as paracentesis after injection of local anesthetic agent a needle or trocar and a cannula are inserted through the anterolateral abdominal wall into the peritoneal cavity through linea alba and the needle is inserted superior to the uh, empty urinary bladder to avoid injury to inferior epigastric vessels peritonitis may result in formation of localized abscess in various parts of peritoneal cavity common site of pus collection is the right and left subphrenic recess right subphrenic abscess due to ruptured appendices or uh, or perforated duodenal ulcer continues with hepatorenal abscess because it uh, the hepatorenal recess is most uh, gravity dependent part of the peritoneal cavity and the subphrenic abscess along with the hepatorenal abscess is drained uh, by taking incision inferior to the 12th rib the anterior subphrenic abscess drains through the subcostal incision inferior and parallel to right costal margin so the first figure is of splenic notch spleen develops from mesenchymal condensation in dorsal mesogastrium during 6th week of intrauterine life along with psilomic epithelium of dorsal mesentery and the proliferating cells invade angiogenic mesenchyme which becomes condensed vascularized to form lobules lymphocytes migrate to the spleen in late fetal life from central lymph organ and embryological basis for presence of notch on superior margin is improper fusion of splenic nodules superior border of spleen possesses characteristic notch on its anterior part so abnormally enlarged spleen is identified by palpating these splenic notches spleen enlarges towards the umbilicus and right iliac fossa the next figure is of accessory spleen so the accessory spleen is small nodule of splenic tissue found apart from main body of the spleen in 10% population and the medical significance is interpretation error in diagnostic imaging or continued symptoms after therapeutic splenectomy 
and polysplenia is presence of multiple accessory splints when some cells from developing splen are deposited along the path from midline where the splen forms over uh, its final location and the accessory splens are located along hilum of the splen uh, also uh, in the pancreatic tail along splenic vessels gastrosplenic ligament spleno renal ligament accessory spleen is also found in the walls of stomach intestine greater omentum mesentery in the renal fossa along the gonadal path then spleno gonadal fusion may occur there is a term called splenosis it is a condition where foci of splenic tissue undergoes auto transplantation following physical trauma or splenectomy then the third figure is of care sign so small branches of splenic arteries are end arteries and their obstructions result in splenic infarction which causes referred pain in the left shoulder so it is known as positive care sign so here in this figure we can see the types of vagotomy so the anterior vagal trunk is derived from left vagus as we know and it enters as single branch on anterior surface of esophagus if we see its course it runs towards the lesser curvature of stomach where it gives hepatic and duodenal branches which leave stomach in hepatoduodenal ligament and it gives anterior gastric branches of latter jet the posterior vagal trunk is derived from right vagus mainly and it enters the abdominal posterior surface of esophagus towards lesser curvature it supplies anterior and posterior surface of stomach it gives celiac branch along the lesser curvature it gives rise to posterior gastric branch of latter jet then uh, there is a term called criminal nerve of grassy so the first branch of posterior trunk innervates gastric fundus and failure to divide this nerve Uh, during a uh, during acid reducing surgeries it may lead to recurrence ulcers then crow foot crow's foot is the distal branch of anterior and posterior trunk of uh, anterior and posterior trunk and it provides innervation to the anterior pyloric region antro pyloric region these branches are spread in highly selective vagotomy now if we see the types of vagotomy there is truncal vagotomy selective vagotomy and highly selective vagotomy so the truncal division of anterior posterior trunk 4 cm proximal to gastroesophageal junction is uh, it removes the uh, ache mediated secretion of acid that is acid uh, the acetyl choline mediated secretion of acid from parietal cells and it results in emptying of uh, the liquids due to removal of vagally mediated receptive relaxation of gastric fundus and decrease emptying of solids due to removal of vagally mediated relaxation of pylorus the truncal vagotomy is often uh, accompanied with the drainage which increases emptying of the solid and also there is pyloroplasty done with it it can be combined with enterectomy to suppress the acid secretion then selective vagotomy is the division of anterior and posterior branches distal to the branching of hepatobiliary and ciliary uh, and the celiac branches uh, required uh, it also requires drainage that is selective vagotomy with drainage or enterectomy so combined surgery can be done third variety is highly selective vagotomy there the parietal cells or the proximal uh, vagus is uh, divided so division of fibers supplying parietal cells of the fundus and body preserving crow foot fibers innervating antrum and pylorus eliminates the need for drainage so these are different types of vagotomy liver biopsy is a procedure to remove small piece of liver tissue to examine microscopically for pathology and severity of disease 
मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप ऑफ लीवर बायोप्सी इज पर क्यूटेनियस लीवर बायोप्सी सो द नीडल इज पास थ्रू राइट नाइन्थ इंटरकोस्टल स्पेस इट ट्रैवर्स इज द प्लूरल एंड पेरिटोनियल कैविटीज इट इज नोन एज पर क्यूटेनियस लीवर बायोप्सी अदर टाइप्स ऑफ लीवर बायोप्सी आर ट्रांसजुगुलर एंड लैप्रोस्कोपिक देर आर टू रूट्स इंटरकोस्टल एंड सबकोस्टल इन द इंटरकोस्टल रूट द नीडल इज इंसर्टेड इन मिड एक्सिलरी लाइन थ्रू नाइन्थ और टेंथ इंटरकोस्टल स्पेस बिकॉज अबव दिस इट विल इंजोर द लंग्स and needle traverses through skin superficial fascia external oblique internal oblique then intercostal is costal uh, and parietal pleura then costo diaphragmatic recess diaphragmatic pleura diaphragm and the right subphrenic space and visceral peritoneum and then it reaches the liver in case of intercostal whereas in subcostal route it is used in patients with enlarged liver uh, below the costal margin in mid clavicular line this slide has three figures in it first is of acute colitis as the figure shows the cause it is mainly by obstructing gallstones or bile stresses and the risk factors are old age obesity in women it is more common in multi paras or uh, if there is any family history and rapid weight loss in case of carcinoma pancreas so it occurs in right upper quadrant and there is a sign called murphy's sign so if we palpate the gall bladder during inspiration patient stops breathing in and winces with a catch in breath so it is known as murphy uh, murphy's sign and clinically we can uh, see pain in the epigastric and right upper quadrant and it is associated with fever nausea vomiting anorexia we can diagnose acute cholecystitis through ultrasonography or uh, uh, there is ct scan or hepatobiliary amino diacetic acid scan is there then there is a referred pain of common bile duct or gall bladder in the epigastrium it is also referred to the right shoulder and inferior angle of the right scapula when finger is placed below the costal margin at the tip of ninth costal cartilage there is sharp pain uh, on inspiration so here the patient winces with catch of breath and this is known as murphy's sign so cholecystitis and cholelithiasis in both this condition there is spasmodic biliary colic and murphy's sign is positive then the second uh, figure or uh, in the second slide we can see the causes of pain around the umbilicus it is also known as peri umbilical pain so it is mainly caused by the conditions like appendicitis crohn's disease gallstone or if there is umbilical hernia infection pancreatitis then uh, the third slide shows radiating pain of kidney to the groin so the causes of pain are renal stones urine uh, urinary infection vesico urethral reflux or uh, ureteral pelvic junction obstruction ureteral stricture then uh, there can be pyelonephritis trauma carcinoma and pain is constant dull aching under the ribs and this this pain uh, associated with the kidneys also spread to the groin region this slide is of obstructive jaundice so biliary obstruction when the passage of bile into the duodenum is blocked it is known as obstruction or uh, obstructive jaundice obstruct obstruction may be intrahepatic or extrahepatic intrinsic obstruction its example is gallstones and extrinsic obstruction example is carcinoma head of the pancreas in obstructive jaundice the bile pigment will not reach duodenum so the feces will be light colored instead of bile pigment uh, means the bile pigment will reach the blood 
and it is excreted in the form of color dark colored urine so it is associated with uh, episodic pains due to gall stones and weight loss associated with the pancreatic carcinoma whichever may be the cause and there is one sign known as uh, curvosier sign so the dilatation of gall bladder occurs in extrinsic obstruction of bile duct like pressure by uh, the carcinoma pancreas and intrinsic obstruction by gall stone causes fibrosis so here we have to remember that if there is any intrinsic cause like gallstone it causes shrinkage or fibrosis of the gall bladder and extrinsic cause like uh, carcinoma pancreas causes dilatation of the gall bladder when the body or pylorus carcinoma mass is palpable uh, we use gastroscope to inspect mucosa of air inflated stomach we observe gastric lesions we take biopsies and the nodes along the splenic vessels can be excised by removing spleen uh, then gastrosplenic and splenorenal ligaments also nodes along the gastroomental vessels can be removed by resecting greater omentum and removal of aortic and celiac nodes along the head of pancreas is difficult metastasis can also occur through thoracic duct to the left supraclavicular lymph nodes which are known as trosiers lymph, uh, lymph nodes is the trosiers sign is positive and these uh, when the metastasis occurs uh, up to the left supraclavicular lymph node which are known as signal lymph node they are also known as sentinel lymph nodes and uh, this is common in blood group a Kellogg's triangle is also known as hepatocystic triangle it is a small triangular space at porta hepatis of uh, and it is of surgical importance as uh, while dissecting this area during cholecystectomy the important contained is cystic artery so the cystic duct uh, cystic artery must be identified before ligation division to avoid intrahepatic injuries uh, and we can see in this diagram the boundaries of these this triangle are uh, we can see the common hepatic duct then the cystic duct and superiorly there is cystic artery which forms this kellogg's triangle normal portal pressure is 5 to 15 mm of mercury and if the pressure is above 40 mm of mercury it is known as portal hypertension it is usually measured by splenic puncture and recording intrasplenic pressure and the causes of portal hypertension are liver cirrhosis bantis disease thrombosis of the portal vein effects of portal hypertension as we can see in the first diagram are congestive splenomegaly ascites collateral circulation is also established through the porto systemic communication so the first condition is caput medusi which you can see in the second diagram so there is a establishment of collateral circulation around the umbilicus and it is of diagnostic value for clinician then the second is esophageal varices at the lower end of esophagus which may rupture and cause fatal hematemesis the third site of porto systemic communication is the anal canal hemorrhoids in the anal canal may be responsible for repeated bleeding felt uh, per rectum and the lower end of the esophagus is a site of portal cavity anastomosis anastomosis so esophageal veins drain into left gastric vein and then into the portal veins other esophageal veins drain into hemiazygous and then uh, vein, azygous vein superior vena cava in liver cirrhosis the portal venous pressure is raised it leads to esophageal varices which may rupture and lead to hematemesis now if we see the lower end of esophagus the portal vein is left gastric and systemic vein is esophageal vein 
at the lower end of rectum there is anastomosis of portal component formed by superior rectal and systemic vein is middle and inferior rectal around the umbilicus that is para umbilical vein and systemic veins from above are superior epigastric and lateral thoracic from below superficial epigastric and inferior epigastric on sides we have posterior intercostal and lumbar veins then there are other sites of portocaval anastomosis as well like posterior abdominal wall bare area of the liver falciform ligament and ligamentum venosus slide is of diaphragmatic hernia diaphragmatic hernia may be congenital or acquired in congenital hernias retrosternal hernia may occur through the space between zygoid process and costal origin of diaphragm through foramen of morgagni or space of larry it is common on right side between pericardium and right pleura the second variety is postero lateral diaphragmatic hernia it is commonest variety and it occurs through pleuro peritoneal hiatus or foramen of vostalic it is situated at the periphery of the diaphragm in the region of 10th or 11th rib it is more common on left side and there is communication between pleura and peritoneal cavities it is fatal and it requires urgent or emergency operation within few hours of life as there is acute distress caused by abdominal viscera's filling the left chest third variety is posterior hernia there is failure of development of posterior part of the diaphragm one or both the cruras may be absent aorta and esophagus lie in a gap but there is no hernial sac then the fourth variety is central hernia it is rare left sided and it result it is a result of rupture of fetal membranous diaphragm in the region of left dome then the acquired hernias can be traumatic or hiatal traumatic hernia is due to bullet injuries of a diaphragm commonly hiatal hernia it is uh, it again may be congenital or acquired congenital hiatal hernia occurs due to persistence of embryonic peritoneal process in the posterior mediastinum in front of cardiac end of stomach so the stomach can roll upwards until it lies upside down in the posterior mediastinum and the normal relation of cardioesophageal junction to the diaphragm is unaltered in case of acquired hiatal hernia which is also known as sliding hernia it is commonest of all the internal hernias and it is due to phrenico esophageal membrane formed by reflection of diaphragmatic fascia to the lower end of esophagus cardiac end of the stomach slides up valvular mechanism of cardioesophageal junction is disturbed it causes reflux of the gastric content into the esophagus so these are some varieties of diaphragmatic hernias slide is of suprapubic cystostomy superior surface of empty bladder lies at the level of superior margin of pubic symphysis as the bladder feels it extends superiorly above the pubic symphysis between parietal peritoneum and anterior abdominal wall bladder lies adjacent to the wall without intervention of peritoneum and the distended bladder may be punctured in the suprapubic cystostomy or surgically approached superior to the pubic symphysis for catheter or instrument without traversing the peritoneum and without entering the peritoneal cavity so in case of calculi foreign bodies small tumors they may be removed from bladder through suprapubic uh, ex, uh, this extra peritoneal incisions and the urine flow may be blocked by the swelling of prostate in case of benign prostatic hypertrophy or traumatic disruption of urethra or in case of congenital defects 
of urinary tract obstructions such as kidney stones passed into urethra or cancer so this is this uh, suprapubic cystostomy is used as a treatment among spinal cord injury patients who are unable to use intermittent catheterization to empty bladder and cannot otherwise void due to detrusor sphincter dyssynergia so in such conditions we do suprapubic cystotomy we'll see what is the anatomical basis for urine obstruction in benign prostatic hypertrophy so the benign prostate hypertrophy in uh, middle age projects enlarged prostate into urinary bladder and impedes urination by distorting prostatic urethra middle lobule enlarges and obstructs uh, the urethral orifice on straining prostatic mass occludes the urethra benign prostatic hypertrophy is common cause of urethral obstruction leading to nocturia that is voiding during night or dysuria that is pain and difficulty while voiding and urgency desire to void it increases the risk of cystitis and kidney damage digital rectal examination for enlargement and tumors when full bladder feels hard and irregular in malignancy the cancer cell metastasize via lymphatic route uh, through internal iliac or sacral lymph nodes or venous route is via internal vertebral venous plexus to the vertebrae and uh, the brain so an instrument is inserted trans urethrally through external urethra orifice and spongy urethra into prostatic urethra to remove uh, all or a part of hypertrophied prostate it is known as trans urethral resection of prostate it preserves the nerves blood vessels associated uh, with the capsule and it restores the sexual function and there is normal urine control in radical prostatectomy entire prostate is removed along with the seminal uh, vesicle seminal gland ejaculatory duct and the terminal part of ductus deferens it has two figures first figure is of retroverted uterus and second figure is of prolapsed uterus so instead of pressing the uterus against urinary bladder increased intra abdominal pressure tends to push retroverted uterus a solid mass positioned upright over the vagina into the vagina itself so retroverted uterus is more likely to prolapse and it is exacerbated by presence of disrupted perineal body or atrophic pelvic floor ligaments and muscles then prolapse of anterior wall of vagina drags the bladder it is known as cystocil and it drags the urethra it is known as urethrocil or the posterior wall drags rectum it is known as rectocil so the weakness of supports of the uterus can cause prolapse and uh, the tone of levator ani muscle or perineal body then the cardinal ligament which is also known as transverse cervical ligament then the pubo cervical and sacro cervical ligament these are all very important in um, preventing the uterine prolapse so if the supports of uterus are lost it results in prolapsed uterus normally the blastocyst is implanted in the fundus posterior wall of the fundus of the uterus and implantation anywhere other than the normal site is known as ectopic pregnancy so it can be intrauterine or extrauterine so uh, most common site is most common site of ectopic pregnancy is tubal pregnancy that is implantation in the uterine tube itself 
so pyosulfings is the collection of pus in uterine cavity which may occlude the lumen uh, by adhesions so the blastocyst may not pass along the tube to the uterus blastocyst may get implanted in the mucosa of uterine tube and it produces ectopic tubal pregnancy implantation in the mucosa of uterine tube commonly in the ampulla is known as tubal pregnancy and it is the most common ectopic pregnancy tubal pregnancy may rupture with severe hemorrhage in the abdominal pelvic cavity during first 8 weeks of gestation it is a threat to mother's life with death of embryo and it may also cause peritonitis Ligation of uterine tube is a surgical method of birth control. In these patients, the oocytes discharge from ovaries and they enter into the tubes and get degenerated. And sterilization is done by either abdominal tubal ligation or laparoscopic tubal ligation. In case of open abdominal ligation it is performed through short supra pubic incision made at the pubic hairline and it involves interruption with removal of segment of the tube and tube closure by suture ligation in laparoscopic tubal ligation um, it is done with fiber optic laparoscopy and Uh, this fiber optic tube is inserted through small incision near umbilicus in this procedure tubal continuity is interrupted by cautery or rings or clips so this procedure for sterility or birth control or family planning is known as tubal ligation bilateral vasectomy is done for family planning or for sterility ductus difference is about 45 cm long it is thick walled muscular tube that transports spermatozoa from testis to ejaculatory duct it begins in the tail of epididymis as continuation of the duct of epididymis it ascends in the spermatic cord it passes through the inguinal canal and enters in true pelvis and ends by joining the duct of seminal vesicle to ejaculatory duct vasectomy is performed under local anesthesia a small incision is made in the upper part of scrotal wall and small segment of vas deferens is excised between two ligatures on both the sides those sperm production that is spermatogenesis continues sperm cannot pass in the ejaculatory duct and urethra so ejaculatory fluid contains no sperms so person is sterile after few post operative ejaculations it is of perianal abscess and anal fissures so the ischio anal fossae are occasional site of infection causing painful abscess infection reaches the ischio anal fossa from either uh, cryptitis that is inflammation of anal sinuses or extension from pelvic rectal abscess or after the tear in anal mucous membrane or other causes penetrating wounds in the anal region so there is fullness and tenderness between anus and ischial tuberosity perianal abscess may rupture spontaneously and open in the anal canal or the rectum or perianal uh, skin so ischio anal fossa communicates posteriorly through deep postnatal space from uh, one fossa to other in horseshoe around posterior part of the anal canal in case of chronic uh, constipated patients the anal wall and the mucosa may be torn by hard feces so anal fissure is located in posterior midline and uh, it is painful because it is supplied by inferior rectal nerves and the peri anal abscess follows infection of uh, of the anal fissure and it spreads to the ischio anal fossa 
then to the pelvic anal uh, pelvis also and it forms pelvic rectal abscess anal fistula uh, may occur from anal infection or cryptitis again slide is of hemorrhoids so in this we can see internal piles or true piles they are secular dilatations of internal rectal venous plexus internal hemorrhoids result from uh, from the breakdown of muscularis mucosae a smooth prolapse into anal canal are compressed by contracted sphincter impeding blood flow and they uh, strangulate they ulcerate and because of presence of arteriovenous anastomosis the bleeding from internal hemorrhoids is uh, red in color and we treat only uh, prolapsed ulcerated internal hemorrhoids they occur above pectine pectinate line so they are painless they bleed with uh, straining at stools so the primary piles occur in 3 o'clock 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock position of the anal wall and they are formed by enlargement of three main radicals of superior rectal veins which lie in the anal column which occupies the left lateral right posterior and right anterior position varicosities in other position of the lumen is called secondary piles and the factors responsible for for the piles are poor support of veins from surrounding loose connective tissue or the veins are less capable of resisting increased blood pressure then absence of walls in the superior rectal and portal veins also compression of vein at the site Uh, the peers muscular coat of the rectum or direct transmission of increased portal pressure at the portosystemic communication so these are all causes of secondary piles then the external piles occur below pectinate line and they are very painful and they do not bleed on straining at stools they are uh, thrombosis of the veins of external rectal venous plexus and they are covered by skin often anal fistula is associated so anal fistula is caused by spontaneous rupture of abscess around the anus or uh, following surgical drainage of the abscess so most of the abscess are caused uh, by small vestigial glands opening into the anal sinus like the anorectal abscess they track in various di directions uh, medially into the anal sinus laterally into the ischio anal fossa inferiorly at the surface or superiorly into the rectum so fistula is caused by ischio anal or pelvic rectal abscess and complete fistula opens internally into the uh, lumen and it extends at the surface outer surface or the skin dysfunction of urinary bladder due to disease of central nervous system or peripheral nervous system involved in control of micturition uh, results in automatic bladder so spinal cord lesion above sacral level causes reflex neuro uh, reflex neurogenic bladder here the detrusal muscle uh sphincter dis synergia is there bladder sensations are interrupted then the bladder tone is increased capacity is reduced and small residual urine urgency frequency urge incontinence is also seen in case of incomplete lesions there is inability to initiate voluntary micturition and the systematogram Uh, shows uninhibited contraction of detrusor in response to small volume of fluid and the cause of automatic bladder are spinal cord trauma then compressive myelopathy myelitis and syringomyelia this figure shows which lobes are involved in benign prostatic hypertrophy and in prostatic cancer 
so if we consider benign prostatic hypertrophy the median lobe transition zone surrounding urethra and the median lobe located between ejaculatory duct and the urethra in central zone of the prostate upper portion of the median lobe near the trigone of the bladder is common site of benign prostatic hypertrophy so benign prostatic hypertrophy is common in the median lobe of prostate whereas the peripheral zone which extends posterolaterally around the gland from apex to base is located near the rectal wall so this peripheral zone is common site of malignancy or prostatic cancers structures palpated through per vaginal digital examination are anteriorly there is urethra bladder pubic symphysis posteriorly rectum and pouch of douglas superiorly we can palpate cervix laterally we can palpate the ovaries fallopian tube lateral wall of pelvis and ureter and in case of uh, per rectal digital examination digital uh, examination here the fingers are in, uh, finger enters through the anal canal before reaching the lower end of a rectum and the structures palpated in the males are posterior surface of prostate seminal vesicle vast difference and in females perineal body cervix presenting part of the fetus during delivery can be palpated and in both the sexes the anorectal ring then coccyx sacrum ischial fossa and ischial spine are palpated then palpation of some abnormalities like within the lumen there can be fecal impaction and foreign body or bleeding piles or hemorrhoids then rectal growth strictures thrombosed piles and outside the rectum in males we can palpate enlargement of prostate seminal vesicle bulbo urethral gland stone in membranous urethra in case of females enlargement of uterus uterine tubes ovaries then abnormalities in the pouch of douglas can be palpated in both the sexes distended bladder then lower ureteric stones tumors of bony pelvis are palpated during parturition the dilatation of cervix is assessed through rectal wall to avoid infection by repeated vaginal examinations perineal tear is laceration of skin and soft tissue in women in the area which separates vagina from anus perineal tear occurs in women as a result of vaginal childbirth which strains the perineum it is common obstetric injury and the superficial tear needs no treatment but in case of severe tear it can cause bleeding pain dysfunction so they are uh, repaired and the perineal tear occurs when the baby's head is coming through the vaginal opening and it is too large for the vagina to stretch or the head is normal but the vagina doesn't stretch easily so here we do episiotomy episiotomy is surgical incision of perineum and the infero posterior vaginal wall to enlarge the vaginal orifice to decrease traumatic tearing of perineum and uh, the jack tear of perineal muscle it is indicated when the descent of fetus is arrested or uh, protracted when the instrument is uh, necessary in median episiotomy the perineal body is incised uh, scar heals by fibrosis and when further tearing occurs it is directed to anus and the sphincter may get damaged or the ano vaginal fistula may occur severe lacerations can cause incontinence pelvic prolapse ano vaginal fistula so mediolateral episiotomy is preferred it is less likely to damage the sphincter and canal this slide is of lumbar puncture 
सो लंबर पंक्चर इज डन टू टेक सेरेब्रो स्पाइनल फ्लूड सैंपल फॉर डायग्नोस्टिक पर्पज और टू इंजेक्ट स्पाइनल एनेस्थेटिक एजेंट लंबर पंक्चर नीडल इज इंसर्टेड बिटवीन स्पाइनस प्रोसेस ऑफ थर्ड और फोर्थ और बिटवीन फोर्थ एंड फिफ्थ लंबर वर्टिब्रीज बिकॉज द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड एंड्स एट लोअर बॉर्डर ऑफ एल वन और सुपीरियर बॉर्डर ऑफ एल टू इन लंबर पंक्चर द पेशेंट्स बैक इज फ्लैक्स सो दैट द इंटरस्पाइनस स्पेस वाइडेंस वेन द लंबर रीजन इज फुल्ली फ्लैक्सड एंड द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड मूव्स अप बाय वन पॉइंट टू फाइव सेंटीमीटर सो इट मिनिमाइजेज पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ कॉर्ड इंजुरी ड्यूरिंग लंबर पंक्चर द नीडल पासिस थ्रू सम एनाटोमिकल स्ट्रक्चर्स विच आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो द स्ट्रक्चर्स पियर्स बाय द नीडल ड्यूरिंग लंबर पंक्चर फ्रॉम सुपरफिशियल टू डीप आर एज वी कैन सी इन द डायग्राम देर इज स्किन देन सुपरफिशियल फेशिया सुपरा स्पाइनस लिगामेंट इंटर स्पाइनस लिगामेंट लिगामेंटम फ्लेवम इपीड्यूरल स्पेस ड्यूरा मैटर एरेक्नोइड मैटर and then we reach the sub arachnoid space containing cerebrospinal fluid in the sub arachnoid space again the highest point of iliac crest passes through fourth lumbar vertebrae and it acts as a guide to third fourth or fourth and fifth lumbar level lumbar puncture is not done in patients with increased intracranial pressure because sudden removal of small amount of csf by lumbar puncture may precipitate medullary coning with fatal results slide is of prolapsed disc normally the spine is made up of vertebral column there are 33 vertebrae and intervertebral disc between each vertebrae which acts as a shock absorber the disc is made of outer fib uh, outer band known as annulus fibrosus and the inner gel like substance is nucleus pulposus when nucleus pulposus herniates through the break in annulus fibrosus it may compress the nerve roots of spinal cord it is more common in lumbar region of the spine because it carries most of the body weight there are four stages of prolapsed disc there is bulging then protrusion extrusion and sequestration so third and fourth stage that is extrusion and sequestration causes complete herniation so the pain resulting from herniation with radiculopathy and neurological deficit may include sensory changes like tingling numbness or motor changes like weakness reflex loss due to nerve compression uh, by nucleus pulposus in the cervical region if this disc prolapses it causes pain in the neck shoulder and arms in thoracic region it causes pain in chest in lumbar region there is pain in buttocks thighs and legs sciatica increases with rise in pressure in the canal uh, and the straight leg raising test is positive and there is loss of power reflex it may follow with the loss of power reflex slide is of spondylolisthesis so uh, now there are two terms spondylosis and spondylolisthesis so spondylolysis is the defect allowing a part of vertebral arch mostly the posterior projection from the uh, vertebral body that surrounds the spinal cord and bears articular and transverse and spine uh, spinal process so to be separated from its body the in this defect the vertebral arch formed by these three processes will get separated from its body so spondylolysis of fifth lumbar vertebrae results in separation of vertebral body from part of its vertebral arch bearing inferior articular process which normally interlocks with the articular process of sacrum 
uh, when the body of fifth lumbar vertebrae slides anteriorly on the sacrum bilaterally it is known as spondylolisthesis so that it overlaps the sacral promontory and there is intrusion of fifth lumbar vertebrae into pelvic inlet it reduces the anteroposterior diameter of pelvic inlet uh, which may interfere with the parturition it may also compress the spinal nerves and it causes low back or uh, lower limb pain and uh, obstetrician's test for spondylolisthesis is by uh, running fingers along the lumbar spinous process abnormally prominent fifth lumbar process indicates anterior part of fifth lumbar vertebrae and vertebral column superior to it may move anteriorly relative to the sacrum and vertebral arch of fifth uh, lumbar vertebrae uh, so there is sagittal mri it confirms the diagnosis and uh, we can also measure the antero posterior diameter of pelvic inlet this slide is of spina bifida so here the two halves of the neural arch may fail to fuse leaving a gap in midline which is known as spina bifida so the meninges and spinal cord may herniate through this gap protrusion of meninges alone results in formation of cystic swelling filled with cerebrospinal fluid and this swelling is called meningocele central canal of herniated part of the cord may dilate and this condition is known as syringomyelocele the spinal cord may open posteriorly it is known as mylocele so the spina bifida with uh, no swelling on the surface is known as spina bifida occulta this slide has two figures Uh, there is sacralization of lumbar vertebrae and in next figure there is lumbarization of first sacral vertebrae now let us see what is the difference between these two terms so the fifth lumbar vertebrae or its transverse process may fuse on one or both the sides with the sacrum and the transverse process may articulate with the alveolar of sacrum or with ilium this may press the fifth lumbar nerve and the lum, uh, the lumbar vertebrae body sometimes arise from two primary centers and if one center fails to develop it results in hemi vertebrae it is also known as lumbosacral transitional vertebrae in case of lumbarization it is where uppermost segment of the sacrum is not fused rather it is free to move and participate along neighboring lumbar vertebrae in the spinal activity so the first sacral segment is lumbarized so what is the difference here in case of sacralization of the lumbar vertebrae the mostly the fifth lumbar vertebrae gets fused with the sacrum and in case of lumbarization of first sacral vertebrae the as we know there are five pieces in the sacrum so the first piece of the sacrum s1 will be a separate entity so it uh, it is known as lumbarization of first sacral vertebrae in this slide there are two figures first figure is of barium swallow and the next figure is of normal barium meal so first we will see what is barium swallow examination so in this procedure the patient is instructed to swallow barium sulfate suspension and the radiographic images of the esophagus are taken barium swallow is indicated to identify esophageal structures to identify any mass projecting in the lumen of esophagus to identify the condition known as aplasia cardia where there is neuromuscular uh, incoordination then to identify enlargement of left atrium it is also indicated to identify aortic aneurysm 
uh, where the esophagus is pushed to the mood, uh, to the midline by aortic aneurysm and here we have to note that the constrictions of esophagus due to arch of aorta then the left principal bronchus and esophagus when it passes through the opening in the diaphragm these are normal esophageal um, constrictions okay now the next slide is of barium meal so in this the barium sulfate suspension is given to the patient by mouth and radiographs are taken at interval of 15 to 45 minutes to visualize the parts of gastrointestinal tract radiographically as the barium progresses through GIT so the stomach and small intestine are visualized we can study the position shape curvatures of stomach superior most part of the stomach that is fundus it is seen as a radio opaque shadow due to gas and commencement of first part of the duodenum is seen as radio opaque triangular homogeneous shadow base of the triangle is directed towards the pyloric end of the stomach and this triangle is known as duodenal cap this triangle is formed as a result of projection of pylorus into the first part of duodenum duodenal ulcers can deform the duodenal cap first part of duodenum gives smooth appearance rest of the small intestine that is second third fourth part of the duodenum and the jejunum they have feathery appearance due to well developed circular mucosal folds ileum gives smooth mucosal appearance this slide is of barium enema so there are uh, two procedures of barium enema single contrast or double contrast in single contrast barium enema patient to be examined is given mild laxatives at night before the day of examination to clear the fecal matter and on the day of barium enema examination the patient is first given plain water enema followed by about 400 to 1200 ml of barium enema through anal opening and then the radiological appearance of large intestine is seen so the large intestine is of wider caliber and it gives saculated appearance that is hostrations are there in case of double contrast barium enema examination uh, it is used to define normal and abnormal mucosal anatomy of the colon and rectum it is superior to single contrast method here the barium enema is given to the patient and it is followed by pushing air through anal orifice into the rectum and colon so the abdomen and the pelvis are seen radiologically double contrast enhances mucosal uh, pathology of the colon and rectum slide is of cholecystography visualization of gall bladder after administration of radio opaque dye is known as cholecystography and according to the route of administration of radio opaque dye it is of uh, three types oral cholecystography intravenous cholecystography or cholangiography and there is magnetic resonance cholangiopancreaticography so in case of oral cholecystography the indications are cholelithiasis that is gallstones or carcinoma gallbladder congenital anomalies of the gallbladder the mechanism of action of cholecystography oral cholecystography is radio opaque contrast agent is given orally which is absorbed by intestine and transported through portal vein to the liver from uh, there to the bile and the contrast agent are excreted in the hepatic duct from hepatic duct they are transported by a cystic duct to the gallbladder where they are concentrated now the procedure of cholecystography is before the test patient is asked to take fat free light dinner and six uh, tablets of telepic that is iodine dye 
is given and after this the patient is asked to fast till the test is performed and uh, till the test is performed next morning and the patient is in instructed to breathe in and remain still while abdominal radiograph is taken particularly of right hypochondrium as the gallbladder is full of contrast dye a radio opaque pyriform shadow is obtained on cholecystogram and the patient is given fatty meal and then we repeat the cholecystogram and it is taken to monitor emptying of the gallbladder if everything is normal then the gallbladder appears contract uh, contracted after fatty meals then the next route of administration is intravenous so in in case of intravenous cholecystography uh, it is now outdated or obsolete technique and it is replaced by ultrasonography ct scan and mri so there is magnetic resonance um, cholecystopancreaticography it is used to visualize the biliary and pancreatic ducts and the indication for mrcp are uh, liver disease then the tumor stones inflammation or there can be congenital anomalies of the gall bladder bile duct then uh, pancreatic duct anomalies unexplained abdominal pain also there is um, ERCP endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreaticography to visualize the uh, gall bladder and the duct system extra hepatic biliary apparatus pyelography is also known as urography and the indications for pyelography are nephrolithiasis uh, ureterolithiasis polycystic kidney pyelonephritis hydronephrosis then renal injuries depending on the route of administration of contrast medium it is uh, also called as intravenous pyelography and the second method is retrograde pyelography in case of intravenous pyelography which is also known as descending or excretory pyelography here the patient is advised to stop the diuretics and is kept fasting overnight and uh, before the procedure patient is asked to empty his urinary bladder and then intravenous iodine dye that is urographin or iohexyl iohexol is uh, injected with a dose of 300 to 600 mg per kg body weight and then the radiographs are taken at 5 minutes then 15 minutes and then 30 minutes interval in intravenous pyelography the structures that we can see are minor calices major calices renal pelvis then we can see the ureter it descends from renal pelvis along the tips of transverse process of lumbar vertebrae and each ureter crosses in front of sacroiliac joint and it reaches ischial spine at the level of ischial spine each ureter turns medially to open in urinary bladder then the urinary bladder is triangular shadow in the region of pelvis and the intravenous pyelography can be easily differentiated from retrograde pyelogram as uh, both the ureters are seen in intravenous pyelography whereas uh, one ureter is seen in retrograde pyelography so now we will see what is retrograde or ascending pyelography your uh, catheter is passed through the ureteric orifice into lower part of the ureter under guidance of uh, the cystoscope and then the sodium iodine uh, sodium iodide dye is uh, about 5 to 10 ml is injected and abdo abdominal pelvic radiographs are taken indications for retrograde pyelography are when intravenous pyelography fails to show urinary passage on one side example uh, poor functioning kidneys or when 
द रिजल्ट ऑफ इंट्रावेनस पायलोग्राफी आर इनकनक्लूसिव एंड द स्ट्रक्चर सीन अंडर रेट्रोग्रेड पायलोग्राफी आर रीनल कैलाइसिस रीनल पेल्विस यूरेटर यूरिनरी ब्लैडर देन रीनल पेल्विस एंड यूरेटर ऑफ वन साइड ओनली इज सीन एंड द ड्रॉबैक इज दैट रीनल फंक्शन के नॉट बी असिस्ड एंड द डिटेल्स ऑफ कलेक्टिंग सिस्टम आर प्रोवाइडेड द रीनल पैरेंकाइमा इज ऑल्सो नॉट सीन This slide is of hysterosalpingography, and the common indications for hysterosalpingography are to check infertility, the cause of infertility. So, uh, in hysterosalpingography, we can see the shape of uterus, whether there is any congenital anomaly or adhesions leading to infertility. Then uh, we can see if there is tubal blockage. or the tube is patent then the second in, uh, indication is after permanent sterilization to check for total occlusion of fallopian tube and also we use this technique to evaluate incompetence of cervix in females who give history of recurrent abortions so the procedure of this technique is first the cannula is passed into the cervix through vagina and radio opaque dye like urographin or iohexol is injected it is followed by serial radiographs of pelvis and the structures seen are um, as we can see in the diagram also we can see cannula uterus fallopian tube we can also see the spillage of dye into peritoneal cavity if the tubes are patent Side is of abdominal arteriography. So, a radio opaque medium is used to visualize abdominal aorta and its branches. Patient's breakfast should be withheld, and after pre-medication, the patient is placed prone on the X-ray table. It is used to check blood flow to organs of the abdomen, such as liver, spleen. and it is uh, used to guide placement of medicine or other material to treat cancer or bleeding in the abdomen